May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, what I talked about in my office, just so you can know, I asked them up here very quietly if they eat, if they had a favorite stuffed animal or a favorite blanket. And I asked them if they ever got afraid. And, and Melody said, what do you think? <laughs> I was like, well, yes, that was a dumb question, but, right? Because we all get afraid and we all want something to keep us wrapped up and keep us safe, right? So I took them into my office and I showed them my, not my Star Wars collection. You all know I have Star Wars toys in my office. But I also have a collection of stuffed animals in my office. And, and in that collection is a favorite stuffed animal of mine and it belonged to my mother. And I keep it because it reminds me of my mother. And there are just things that we have that we, that we can hold on to or wrap ourselves in when we get afraid that kind of take that fear away. It doesn't make the situation any better. It just reminds us that we're not alone. Right? That's what, to me, what these texts are about this morning. Because we've got these two texts that are stacked right one on top of the other. We've got Jesus feeding 5,000 people, and then we've got Jesus walking on the water, and they seem to be just smashed together for no reason whatsoever, and here they are. Right? But there's a lot of stuff going on in these stories today. When, when Heather came up here to read it, she said, when this had happened, Jesus got in a boat and went to a deserted place. What is this? In order for us to know what these texts are really about, we have to understand what happened to make Jesus go into a boat to go to a deserted place. Does anybody know what happened? John the Baptist died. Beheaded. Right. John the Baptist was just beheaded by Herod. John the Baptist was just killed. So Jesus decides he needs to get away from stuff for a while. He needs to go and be by himself. So he gets in a boat and he goes away. This is to show us that, you know, every now and then, it's okay to go in your room and shut the door and be by yourself. It's okay to find a spot to get away from things. It's okay to find a spot to get away from everything that's happening. But Jesus gets in this boat and goes someplace, and the people find out and they come to him. And what does he do? He does what he always does. He teaches. He teaches them. He sits down with them. He talks to them. He heals the sick. And then the disciples get worried. Right? Because what's happening? It's getting late. It's getting dark. Maybe it's snowing. Probably not on the Sea of Galilee. But, right? All these people are gathered here and the disciples are like, you need to send them back to town because it's late. They're going to be hungry. And we don't have enough. They're focusing on what they have or don't have. Right? This past week I saw, and one of my friends sent me a, a package from a label of bacon. I saw this on Facebook. I've seen it before, but it was a package of bacon, and it had cooking directions, and it said, cook the basement bacon, you heat up a pan, you put the bacon in the pan, and you, you fry it till it's crisp, flip it over, fry it till it's crisp on that side, and you're done. And then below that, it said, um, if you don't know how to cook bacon, talk to your school administration, because they need to teach you how to do this, because everybody should know how to cook bacon, right? Well, my thought on it, I didn't actually share it this time because I don't think that's the responsibility of the school to teach kids how to cook bacon. I think that's the responsibility of the parents to teach their kids how to cook. And, and when I looked at that, I thought, well, I've failed. My 17-year-old can't cook bacon. <laughs> and she throws away tater tots. I can say these things about her because she's not here this morning. She's homesick. Hopefully she's not listening. Um, but, right? She doesn't know how to fry bacon. I didn't teach her how to fry bacon. We didn't teach her how to do that. We didn't teach her how to cook. So when we look at all of these things, and I, and I think about those things, and I think about how I, how I haven't helped my child learn the skills that she needs to learn to be able to live in a world that she's going to have to live in by herself. And then I start to think about all the other things that I've done wrong as a father or as a parent. And we could fill up oodles of time here with the things that I've done wrong um, as a parent. And if each of us stopped for a minute and thought about all the things that we've done wrong as a parent... We could come up and fill volumes of books 
with the ways that we failed our children. Now, this is not supposed to be sad. And you're all just like, man, he's like bringing us down. But when I thought about this text and I thought about that bacon label, I was like, these two things are, are, are connected. Because see, if I just think about the things that I've done wrong in raising my children, then I don't remember the good things that I've done. I don't see the things that are to come. I don't focus on the things that have, been, that have happened right or the things that are there that could produce other things, right? When the disciples come to Jesus in the evening and they say, you've got to send these people away because we don't have enough food to feed them. They were focused on what they couldn't do. Not on what Jesus could do. And so they came, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. And they're like, well, all we've got is five loaves and two fish. And, and when you think of five loaves of bread, what do you think of? Do you think of Wonder Bread? Something like that? Like a loaf of bread you go to the, you go to the festival or Woodman's to buy, right? These are probably loaves of bread. They're probably no bigger than this. They're probably like these five loaves and two fish um, were probably enough food for one person to eat. Right? Like you, had, you could have some fish sandwiches and have some bread left over. Right? This is it. It's not enough to feed 5,000 people. 5,000 men plus women and children. So we're talking probably 10,000 people, five loaves, and two fish. We're not talking fish, right? When you go fishing, you come back and you say, I caught two fish. <coughs> two fish. So maybe they had reasons to worry. But did they forget who they were with? So Jesus takes the five loaves, the two fish, he blesses them, he breaks them, he gives the disciples, and they bring, they bring back how many baskets full? Twelve. One each. And how big are these baskets? Like the baskets we use for the bulletins? I envision baskets. Right? Like, stand from the floor this tall, baskets. Full of leftovers. And then, after all of this, Jesus... Sends the disciples in a boat, tells them to go across the sea, tells them he'll be with them later because he wants to go in and spend more time in prayer. Why? Because John the Baptist just was killed. His friend had just died. So he wanted to spend some time alone praying and grieving what had happened, what's happening in his life. And so he sends the disciples away. He disperses the crowd and they go across the sea and he starts to walk to them on the sea. What would you do if you were out on the bay and you saw somebody walking? Right now, you may not be too worried. You probably could walk across the bay right now, right? But if it's the middle of summer, and there's waves, and you see somebody come walking to you, I, I don't know what I would do. But the disciples just get scared, right, because they see a ghost. They don't know what to look at or what to think. And Jesus tells them, take heart, don't worry, it's me. And then Peter says something that harkens back to something we talked about of a few weeks ago. He says, Lord, if it is you, call me out of the boat. Who else recently has said to Jesus something of, if you are Satan? Back in the tempting, said to Jesus, if you are the Son of God. And here we see Peter in the boat, and what does he say to Jesus? If it's you. Exact same word, actually. So maybe Peter wasn't saying if, Peter was saying, what's the other meaning of that word? Since. since. Lord, since it's you, tell me to come to you, and I know that I'll be able to. And, and Jesus says, okay, come on. And Peter steps out of the boat, first mistake, right, the boat's safe, even in those waves. And I talked to somebody who's actually been to the Sea of Galilee, and they know, because this is where they were, they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, and the Sea of Galilee is a small enclosed lake that you wouldn't think would get very high waves. But actually on the Sea of Galilee, you can get up to five foot waves, because of the way the winds blow through the area. The waves can get pretty treacherous on the Sea of Galilee. So think about this little shipping boat, 
being tossed and turned on the waves, three or four foot waves, and Jesus is coming walking across them. And Peter says, let me come walk out to you. He's already scared enough in the boat. And he sees this ghost, and now he's like, let me come out to you. And he, Jesus says, okay, come on. And Peter gets out of the boat, and he steps on the water, and he starts to walk. And then what happens? He drowns. <laughs> he sinks like a rock is what happens. And why does he sink? Because he was afraid. But who did he stop looking at? Jesus. He stopped focusing on who had called him out of the boat in the first place. Started focusing on what was happening around him. He started to see the waves coming at him. And he thought, I can't really walk on water. I don't know why I'm out here in the first place. Why did I ask him to make me step out of the boat? Why did I come out here in the first place? Right? But he came out and he was focused on Jesus and he was walking on the water. And then all of a sudden when he looked at what was happening around him, when he thought about the fact that he hadn't taught his daughter how to cook bacon, he started to sink into the sea. <laughs> of course, Peter wouldn't have eaten bacon because he was a good Jew. But you get the point, right? Because he took his focus off of where he needed to be looking. He started to sink. When we don't look at what we're supposed to be looking at, when we're not focused on Jesus and where he's taking us and, and giving us the strength and the faith to see our lives through, we're going to start to sink. Or we're going to wonder how we're going to do the things that he's calling us to do. But when we can focus on him and know that he's giving us the strength and the, and the knowledge and the wisdom to do the things that he's called us to do, we're going to do things that we couldn't even imagine. Because that's what God does. He takes each and every one of us and works through us so that his love can be made known in all of the world. So don't doubt. Just look at Jesus and keep your focus square on him and know that he will always see us through, that he'll keep us on the water and he'll help us to make it to where he's leading us to go and allow him to work in and through you so that his love can be made known to all of the world. Now. Could we do the tune of 597? 597? Yes. What is this? My hope is built on nothing. That's fine. So the words are on the screen.